thank you for joining us here at Lighthouse Baptist Church. We've had an awesome day thus far, and we're looking forward to closing it out with a great service tonight. As the choir sings and the message is preached, we pray that your spirit will be encouraged and your faith will be strengthened. Together, let's worship our God this evening. Good evening, everybody. Let's all stand tonight. And uh, as we start our service tonight, we're going to sing Rescue the Perishing, Care for the Dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Sing it out on that first verse tonight. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. tonight as we start and ask the Lord to bless our service. Father, we ask you to please be with us tonight. Lord, we know that you are the one who is mighty to save, that you have saved us, that we are called, Lord, according to your purpose. And so, Father, tonight as we just spend a few moments to begin our service thinking about this purpose that you've called us to, Lord, to share your love, the good news of the gospel uh, with the world, I pray that you just encourage our hearts in the task that you've called us to, to remember that all power is given to you, and that because of that, we should go into all the world. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Church, you can stay standing. We're going to sing one more song all together. This song from our missions month in January, Facing a Task Unfinished. And so as the choir sings it, we're all going to sing it together. And as we do, I want you to think about those words and to lift your voice up to the Lord tonight. Sing it out on that first verse.
We heard about it this morning. So let's sing that last verse. Lift up your voice on that last verse tonight. Would you be seated and listen to the choir as they sing?
Let's all stand one more time tonight. We preach Christ. No other name has power to save than Jesus Christ our Lord. And so let's sing it out. I love to tell the story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the Singing tonight, church, you may be seated. And go ahead and get out of your Bible tonight, Nehemiah chapter number four. Nehemiah chapter number four, and looking forward to uh, being able to preach tonight. And uh, it's a little different uh, for me, and of course, over the last six months, and as our roles have changed, uh, do be in prayer for Pastor while he was away. I believe he was there uh, with Brother Terry, and I think they have a picture uh, that they're going to show of Pastor and the Terrys, and I know they had a great morning this morning. Continue to be in prayer for Brother Terry and Megan and the kids, and uh, City Light Baptist there in Gallatin, Tennessee, and uh, God is using them, and of course, they're in a new uh, facility, new building for the last several weeks. And God is already filling that one up and to pray for them as they'll be seeking the next steps. We do appreciate your prayers for us as uh, we have begun uh, a work there on the eastern shore. And it has been a lot of work, a lot of prayers, a lot of labors, uh, many prayers and stuff from folks right here in this room. And we appreciate it so very much. Uh, today we were able to have uh, our Easter Sunday was our six month anniversary. And the uh, Lord blessed with a great day. Today we were able to baptize three and uh, the Lord blessed with that. We uh, had two more, uh, but they got a little scared. A couple young ones, uh, my niece and then uh, our youngest, Lauren. And uh, Lauren was kind of a game time decision. As soon as she saw all the people and the water, uh, she started shaking her head no. And uh, I didn't feel like that was the time in front of all those people to say, you're getting baptized. And so uh, we'll put that off till later. Uh, but one, uh, probably the greatest privilege I've had uh, since pastoring the last six months was I got to baptize uh, our oldest, Ashlyn, today. And uh, she came to me uh, Sunday night a few weeks ago. I think it was after uh, Mackenzie Dawson uh, came forward and just saying she needed to get her salvation nailed down. And uh, Ashlyn said, Dad, God's been working on my heart as well. I remember getting baptized, but I don't really remember uh, having that time where I personally put my faith and trust in Christ. And uh, I need to get that nailed down. And so we uh, before went to bed and prayed with her, knelt beside her bed and uh, had the opportunity to lead her to the Lord. And uh, so that's been a blessing. Continue to pray for us. Lots of work that still needs to happen. 
Uh, if you will pray, it's kind of a bittersweet day for us, the gardeners, um, our missionaries who have been helping us, but also our missionaries here uh, that uh, we brought on for support. They're going to be leaving in the morning, headed to Missouri, and Brother Mike and Miss Teresa are right down there. They've been with us uh, since right at grand opening, and uh, been a huge help starting out, uh, you know, just a couple of us not having people to necessarily serve in all the a- areas of ministry, and uh, they have helped in nursery and junior church, and we're going to greatly miss them there, and uh, they've been coming here really on Sunday nights being with us and uh, they'll be our missionaries uh, moving forward and so I encourage you to pray for them and uh, pray for this next church plant that they'll be a part of. Nehemiah chapter number four, we've been going through a series um, for probably the last eight weeks going through the book of Nehemiah and we started in Nehemiah chapter one and we don't have time to catch you up obviously on all of that tonight but want to look here just a, a message that I pray will be an encouragement to you really talking tonight about the tactics that Satan will use to try to get us as Christians, as moms, as dads, uh, to get off the wall and to stop building, to stop moving forward, to stop doing what God has called us to do. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 1, of course, Nehemiah receives the news that uh, the city of Jerusalem is just in shambles at this time, and uh, he was there serving the king as the king's cupbearer, and uh, he, he became burdened for his homeland, and he asked the king to let him go and to begin the process process of rebuilding the wall and Nehemiah responded with compassion and I would encourage all of us when we hear of a need boy let's be moved as it says in Jude uh, some have compassion making a difference and let that be our heartbeat as well well here in Nehemiah 4 the building program so to speak is in full swing the walls are beginning to be rebuilt Uh, things are moving forward things are happening Here's something I've noticed, though, and you've probably noticed this as well. Whenever God begins to work, the devil begins to fight that much harder. Anybody else ever notice that? Uh, I know at least in my life, it seems when things begin to go well, God it seems to be working. Uh, I start getting nervous because I know that the devil wants to fight. He wants to oppose. And many times people who are not grounded, who are not determined, who are not, uh, who don't have just uh, tenacity about them, when the devil begins to push back a little bit, when the devil begins to fight, when we see a little bit of opposition, when we see that things just aren't falling into place, many people, instead of moving forward, instead of staying on the wall, instead of staying after it, will throw in the towel and will quit. Whether that be serving God, Uh, Today's day and age, so many people are calling it quits on their marriage. They're throwing in the towel when it comes to their family. They're just saying, I'm done with Christianity. I'm done with it all. It's just too hard to fight. And we see here that Nehemiah was being faced with this very thing. And I want to challenge you tonight. If you ever want to accomplish anything great for God, or you want to accomplish anything great at your job, or you want to accomplish great, really anything great in this world, you need to learn how to go through opposition and to not quit and to not give up. I won't belabor you. I've told the story before, but uh, I still remember the summer of 2007. We're coming up on 15 years of my wife and I dating. And I still remember uh, over the summertime, I I found out that she had uh, recently become available. And so you're saying, Pastor Andrew, you basically, you were the rebound guy. 100% I was, and uh, I'll own it, and it's worked out very well for me. And so I found out that she had become available, and we began talking a little bit and uh, began texting really every single day. And leading up to going back to college, uh, I mean, every day we were texting, every day we were uh, talking to each other, and I, I still had hadn't officially worked up the courage to officially ask her out. Her family came over to Mobile from Gulfport to go shopping, and I uh, finagled my way to meet them uh, to go out to eat, and uh, I was thinking I would get to go sit by her, and I was going to, you know, make my move, and uh, Jenny's brother, Johnny, made uh, the specific decision to make sure the only chair left at the table was the complete opposite end from her, and so I got to sit by him, and I, I did not go to sit by him. I was trying to sit by her. And so all this time, we're talking every day, and so we finally get to college. I finally work up the courage to ask her on an official date. And would you believe it? I asked her on a date, and she just very nicely looked me in my eyes and said, no. 
No. I know that's hard to believe, but she did. I'm just shot me down. Here's the thing. I, I like this girl. Uh, obviously, we're married, so you kind of know the end of the story, how that all worked out. But, but I wasn't going to be deterred from just a little bit of opposition. Um, I talked to her. That was on a Saturday. I think I asked her out Sunday morning. At Sunday school, I went and actually talked to her. And then I found out her favorite meal. And uh, I, I sent her a text message and said, hey, I'm going to be at this part of the college Wednesday night after church. Would love to see you there. Not knowing if she would show up or not. And I was sitting there with this meal from Arby's that she enjoyed. And she showed up. And I still remember someone asked, man, is this a date? And I said, I'm not sure. I'll let you know later. Uh, I, just, she, I think she was just there for the food. And, uh, but it worked out in my favor. But I wasn't going to be deterred by a little bit of pushback. See, Nehemiah, likewise, was the kind of person who wasn't going to quit. He wasn't going to throw in the towel. He wasn't going to say, all right, I'm giving up just because a little bit of opposition, just because a little bit of pushback, whether it be from the devil or wherever. So I want to look tonight at really several ways the devil will attack us, several ways the devil attacked Nehemiah, and the same tactics that he uses still today to attack the Christian uh, child of God. Let's pray and we'll dig in. Father, be with us tonight as we go through Nehemiah 4, Lord, and uh, hopefully just point out some things that will be a challenge to us, maybe just even a reminder to us. And Lord, really will be something that we could be aware of how the devil, the tactics that he will use to attack us. And Lord, I pray that you would give all of us the strength to be able to stand firm, to stand strong. And Lord, as Nehemiah did, continue building the wall, continue moving forward for your honor and your glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The first tactic that we see the devil using is this tactic or, or this approach of ridicule. Ridicule. Look at verse 1 through verse 6. Nehemiah 4. Look at verse 1 through verse 6. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what do these feeble Jews? Can you, can you just hear mocking them? These, these puny Jews, what are they doing? Will, will they fortify themselves? Do they really think they're going to be able to stop us? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him and he said, even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. He said, even if they do build the wall, a fox is going to go up and tear it down. Just the ridicule. Just, just trying to tell him, look, you can't do this. Uh, it's not going to work out. Verse 4, hear, O our God, for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity and cover not their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the building Builders, so built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. This first tactic we see is that of ridicule. This is the same tactic that maybe a co-worker who doesn't like the fact that you're a Christian will use. Maybe even a family member, the devil, will use people in your life to just kind of cast ridicule and uh, kind of throw shade at you, so to speak, and uh, kind of just tear down what you're trying to do for God. God's people always have enemies. In this case for Nehemiah, it of course was Sanballat who was a government official there in Samaria. It was Tobiah who was an Ammonite and Geshem an Arabian. These three men were really outside the city and all they did was just hurl uh, insults. They tried everything they could to stop what God was doing. Have you ever been around someone who they just can't Stand when God seems to be blessing somebody else. So, so all they do is they just tear down. They're, they're constantly tearing someone else down. Uh, you say, boy, did you hear about so-and-so? And the first response is, oh, well, let me tell you this, this, and this. And, and just ridicule and people who always tend to tear down. We see that this was a tactic the Ammonites will use. They were enemies of the Jews. Deuteronomy 23, 3, and 4 talks about the Ammonites and the Moabites, how they won't enter the congregation of the Lord. And uh, we don't have time, we won't turn there. But this first weapon was ridicule. Verse 2, they mocked the feeble Jews. They just, you, you could just hear the making fun of the ridicule openly before the leaders of Samaria. Can I remind you 
that this is a tactic that Satan uses, and it's a tactic that Satan uses because it's exactly who Satan is. Scripture tells us that Satan is a mocker, and this is something that he has been doing for a long time. Luke twenty two sixty three, and the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. Luke twenty three thirty five through thirty eight, and the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him. Again, that's just a mocking, a ridiculing. You can't do this. You're not good enough. You're not able to do this. You might as well give up. Uh, you're not good. You won't be able to accomplish what God's calling you to do. It says he saved others. Let him save himself if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, offering him vinegar and saying, if thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. A superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. This is a tactic Satan's been using even going back to the crucifixion of Christ. Hey, if you're really God, if you're really who you say you are, why don't you just save yourself? Oh, this isn't really the king. He's not really going to rise from the dead. And of course, we know as we celebrated just a couple weeks later, he did just that. But Satan has been using this tactic for a long time. And can I say he's using it still today? Hey, Christian, you can't go on. Hey, I, you're, you're not good enough to serve God. Hey, your family situation, you're not good enough to be the husband that you need to be, the dad that you need to be. You might as well quit. Hey, just throw in the towel. It's not worth it. You give up. You can't do it. Ridicule is a device many times used by ignorant people who are filled with jealousy. Have you ever noticed that? Most of the time, people who just always have to tear down, ridicule others, really it comes down to they're, they're jealous of maybe how God's blessing somebody. They're jealous of maybe what God is doing. There was a church uh, today that uh, over on the Eastern Shore, Great Baptist Church, celebrating their 50th anniversary. And man, we took them some donuts over there and stopped by and told them, man, we're for you. We hope you have a huge day because hey, we're not against them. We're on the same team. We want God to bless them. It's not us versus them. But yet so many people have this mindset of we just got to ridicule and mock and tear down. We see they mock the people. They call them the feeble Jews. They mock the plan. Will they even finish in a day? They mocked even the materials that they were using. But it's interesting. Look at verse 4 and 5. How did Nehemiah respond to this ridicule? Look at, look at chapter 4. Look at verse 4 and verse 5. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head. Give them for a prey in the land of captivity. Cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Nehemiah, people were ridiculing, tearing them down. You're not good enough. You can't do it. That wall's not going to be built. What did Nehemiah do? Did he respond with the junior high uh, comeback? I know you are, but what am I? Uh, did he respond with a Facebook post telling everybody uh, how mistreated he was? Did he respond with getting all of his people to begin mocking them and hurling insults back at them? No, we see in verse 4 and 5, he responded by going to God. That was a prayer, verse 4 and verse 5. Hear our cry, O God. He said, look, people are against me. They're mocking me. I, I'm not sure if I can take it. But instead of going to everybody else who couldn't solve the problem, he went to God because he knew God not only cared, but God was one who could solve the problem. People here, they still worked as they prayed. Not only did Nehemiah not respond by fighting back, but he responded by just continuing to serve God. Hey, instead of quitting when the ridicule comes, hey, instead of throwing in the towel and giving up when the going gets tough, why don't you, like Nehemiah did, go to God and say, God, I need you. Lord, I, I don't know how I'm going to make it through this. It seems like everything is just crashing in around me. But instead of quitting, instead of giving up, continue working, continue building the wall just as Nehemiah did. Boy, Satan would have loved to see Nehemiah leave the wall. Satan would have loved to see Nehemiah get involved in a dispute with Sanballat and Tobiah. But Nehemiah didn't fall into Satan's trap. Can I challenge you? Don't let ridicule stop whatever it is that you're doing for God. 
Well, take it to the Lord in prayer. Keep on working. The devil would love to see you leave whatever wall it is that you're on, whatever it is that God has called you to do, whatever it is that your ministry is, whether in the church or being a dad, being a mom, the devil would love nothing more than to see you quit. And one of the tactics that he uses is ridicule. But we see not only did the devil use ridicule, but the second tactic he used was a tactic of force. Look at verse 7 through verse 9. There, Nehemiah 4, look at verse 7 through 9. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth and conspired, all of them, together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. When Satan cannot accomplish by ridicule, by, by, by just kind of picking from the outside, by, by chipping away, by doing his best to just get at you, when he can't do that, many times his next tactic is just by an all-out assault. Look at verse 7 again, the force that came. We see we have a Sanballat, Tobiah, all of the Arabians, all of the Ammonites, all of the Ashdodites. It's interesting. If you have your Bible, we're there in Nehemiah. Look back at uh, chapter 2. It's interesting how the devil just kind of ramps things up. Have you ever noticed that? The devil begins to fight. You get determined, I'm going to stay on the wall devil you're not going to win today I'm going to keep serving I'm going to keep fighting I'm going to keep building the wall and do you ever notice that he just seems to ramp up that much more of the attacks he just seems to now bring more look at verse 10 Nehemiah 2 in verse 10 send Balat the Horonite Tobiah the servant the Ammonite heard of it it grieved them so we see initially it's just two people that, that are fighting Nehemiah look down at verse 19 though but when send Balat the Horonite Tobiah the servant, we already saw them, the Ammonite, and Geshem the Arabian heard it. They laughed us to scorn. Can you see kind of the devil just ramping up things, the attack? So now we have three, and then now in seven, we've got Sanballat, Tobiah, we've got all of the Arabians, the Ammonites, the Ashdodites, all of them now are ready to fight. The question, how are we going to move forward? Have you ever been there? It seems the whole world is against well, what I'm trying to do as a Christian. Boy, I don't know about you, but I'm terrified about raising kids in today's day and age. It seems like the whole world is just out with an agenda to keep our kids from living for the Lord. And if you're not careful, you'll get ready to throw in the towel and say, it's not even worth it. I'm going to stop fighting. I'm going to stop pushing my kids to serve the Lord. I'm going to stop having them in church. Hey, coming to church every week, it's just too tough. What's the use? Can I say Romans 8, 31, when we begin to question what everyone else is against us, let me remind you of this first. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Boy, and it doesn't matter if it's the Ashdodites. It doesn't matter if it's the Ammonites. It doesn't matter if it's Sanballat. It doesn't matter if it's Tobiah who seem to be fighting and all the force that Satan brings. Can I just remind you that if God is for you, who can be against you? Hey, if the devil could bring every force that he has, but if you are a child of God and God is for you, none of that matters. Deuteronomy 36 reminds us to be strong strong and of good courage fear not nor be afraid of them for the Lord thy God he it is that doth go with thee he will not fail thee nor forsake thee we see that Nehemiah was fighting against Satan and Satan doesn't play uh, he plays dirty he doesn't play right and he brought ridicule then he brought force how did Nehemiah respond though to this force we see again he didn't just stop building what he did is he went to the Lord and prayed but then it says they also set up a watch I said you know what we, we've got all this force around us we, we need to be mindful of what Sanballat's trying to do hey we need to make sure we're watching out for what the devil is trying to do and we better be on guard with what's going on 
Mark 13, 33 reminds us to take ye heed, watch and pray. Same thing that Nehemiah did, for ye know not when the time is. Mark 14, 38, watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Boy, note that Nehemiah did not depend on prayer alone. He also set a watch. Parents, can I challenge you tonight that there, the devil has a force that is no doubt trying to get our children. And I'm not here to get on any political soapbox. What you do is between you and the Lord. But we can't, you can't watch the news and see mega organizations like Disney who have admittedly now, by default, has seen it, have an agenda to go after our kids and to really take what we believe as a godly view of marriage, a godly view of the home, a godly view of gender, and to tell our kids that that's not true and it's totally different. But can I say, parents, you can't just pray and hope that your kids turn out all right. You can't just pray, all right, God, uh, the force of devil is out there. Everything is trying to come against me. They're trying to attack our family. I just pray it all turns out. The Bible says that Nehemiah set up a watch. Well, that means you need to be mindful of what it is you're allowing into your home. And again, that's between you and the Lord. But can I just say this? The devil, no doubt, knows what he's doing. He's watching. 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil's a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And he's circling your home just as he is mine. And he's on watch waiting to pounce. Are you going to be on watch as mom and dad? We see the devil fought with ridicule, fought with force. But look at verse 10. We see the third thing, ridicule force. Verse 10, though, we see discouragement. Look at verse 10. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed. There's much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. See, the devil now, ridicule, force, both of those are coming from outside. Now, though, none of those worked. Nehemiah set up a watch. He prayed, we're staying on the wall. We're going to keep building. We're not going to quit. We're not throwing in the towel. What God has called us to do is too important. We're not giving up. So now it turns into an inward battle from inside the city, and it becomes discouragement. We see here that workers, sounds to me in verse 10, they were discouraged. The rubbish that is around us, Everything's just falling apart to the point we're not even going to be able to build the wall. Discouragement, complaining spread rapidly uh, throughout and it began to hinder God's work. Here's what's interesting. We see yet again, Nehemiah didn't pay much attention to the complaining. He just kept on building, kept on watching, kept on praying. Can I say something? We, I've, we've all been there and heard, and it sounds somewhat like good preaching when you hear it. Bless God, we're too blessed to be depressed. Hey, you know, we're under the spout where the glory comes out. You know, you need a shout and all those things, that cliches that we hear. But can we be honest? Is anybody else out there sometimes serving God, raising a family, trying to do right? The devil's attacking from ridicule. Force is coming from every side. Has anybody else been there where it could be a discouraging thing? And you could begin to question, is this worth it? Well, I don't know if I can. Okay, when the ridicule was coming, I fought against it. I, I kept building the wall. I kept moving forward for God. Then the devil brought all the force that came about, and still I kept building, I kept serving. But then it begins to get lonely. Discouragement begins to set in. Can I remind us that this is why it is so vital to worship the Lord, to walk with him, to have a time with God. If you're living off your intake of spiritual food from Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and that's it. Can I say it's no wonder you're living in discouragement. You need to be reading God's word daily. You need to be singing praise to him. Boy, do some good. Turn off the TV. Turn on some great Christian music that's talking about how great our God is and how we can go through the fire and how we can continue serving him. 
I love 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. It says, David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. I've heard that verse talked about many times before and many times it's talked about David encouraged himself and you know hey you, you don't need to worry about encouragement from others you just need to get your encouragement and encourage yourself and, and I would agree with that to an extent but I love where he got the encouragement well, look again what it says David encouraged himself in the Lord his God hey if you're looking for encouragement anywhere else except with God, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Hey, and I'm all for getting an encouraging text, and we should do that. Hebrews 3.13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitful of sin, deceitfulness of sin. That's exhortation, encouraging. All of that is good. But can I say the only person who is going to be able to give you the strength to be able to continue building that wall, the only person who is going to be able to lift you up when your spirit is down and sustain you is your heavenly Father. Boy, get alone with him. Read your Bible. Sing praise to him. Boy, let me encourage you. When the hymns are being sung, that's not the time to be hanging out in the lobby. That's the time to be getting in here and be lifting up your praise to God because not only does that encourage you, but that encourages someone else next to you. Boy, when we sing praise to God and sing about how great our God is, when we sing a song, facing a task unfinished, that's exactly what it's talking about here. Hey, God's called you to do something, to reach this world. It's unfinished. We don't have time to give up. We can't throw in the towel. We can't get off the wall. We need to keep going for Christ. We see there's ridicule, there's force, there was discouragement. But then lastly, we see the tactic that Satan used was fear. Look at verse 11 down through verse 23. We'll finish out the chapter. I'll read it quickly. And our adversaries said... They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, ten different times, from all places whence he shall return unto us, they will be upon you. He said, look, they're, gonna, they're coming for us. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher places I even set the people after their families with swords, their spears, their bows. I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers, to the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, uh, your sons, your daughters, your wives, your houses. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to not that we returned all of us to the wall. We kept building everyone unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that half of my servants wrought in the work. The other half of them held both the spears, the shields, the bows, the harbingers, uh, harbingers and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They which build it on the wall, they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. For the builders, every one had his sword girded by his side, and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. And I said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, the work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall one from another. In what place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither unto us, our God shall fight for us. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise, at the same time, said I unto the people, let every one with his servant lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night they may be a guard to us and labor on the day. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saving that every one put them off for washing. We see here that fear began to creep in they, they sent a message basically saying 10 times, look, you, you step out of this city, you let up your guard for one second, we're here waiting for you. They were trying to get fear to creep in and trying to get them just to quit because of the fear of what may or may not happen. We see 10 different times they came. The Jews living outside the city heard the report carried really the, it, was, it was purposely done send ballot to buy began kind of just spreading hey we're going to come we're going to attack when you least expect it be ready 
The Jews who lived outside the city at that time heard the report, and Scripture says 10 different times they brought it. Hey, uh, they're going to come for us. Hope you're ready. Uh, the devil just trying to use that fear tactic. Hey, d- when you know what's coming, uh, when you least expect it, they're going to attack. You better be ready. And they kept coming. Have you ever noticed how persistent the attacks of Satan can be? Just, just keeps coming. Just keeps coming. I mean, he, he, Nehemiah's already gone through ridicule, kept building the wall. Uh, he's already gone uh, through the force and just all the, everything coming, kept building the wall. Discouragement said, and he kept building the wall. And you would think that sooner or later, Sanballat, Tobiah, they would just give up. Can I say Satan's the same way today? You go through seasons where I'm going to keep serving. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to stay on the wall. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. And you feel like, all right, things are getting better. And then the devil attacks again. And then you almost start the process over. I'm staying on the wall. I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to give up. And then he attacks again and in a new way and in another way. And many times we fear failure. And many times we allow fear to get us off the wall. Fear of the unknown. Fear of if I take this step in my Christian life, how's it going to turn out? If I begin to tithe, uh, how are we going to make it? Fear of, well, you fill in the blank. Whatever it is that God is calling you to do, whatever wall God has called you to build, many times we allow fear to stop us from building and to get off the wall. 2 Timothy 1.7 reminds us that God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You may be here tonight and say, well, that's great, but you don't understand the giant that I'm facing. And you're right. I don't know the giant that you're facing. All I know is scripture, Psalm 56, 3, what time I am afraid I will trust in thee. Hey, you may be afraid of what's coming down the pike. You may be fearful of the attacks of Satan. You may be unsure if you're going to be able to continue moving forward. Isaiah 35, 4, say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. I'm not saying that fear isn't real. It's not warranted. What I am saying is don't let fear keep you from being on that wall. Staying faithful, serving God, not quitting, not throwing in the towel. Can I remind you tonight, Satan wants to see the work stop. Whether it be what God is doing here at this church, whether it be what God is doing in your family, he would love nothing more than to see the wall stop being built. Luke twenty two thirty one, 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Folks, Satan wants your family. Satan wants your home. You may be doing the absolute best you can to build that wall, and it's taken everything in your power to stay on that wall. And can we all be honest? Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes the temptation to just kind of give up, stop serving God, Stop pushing your kids to serve the Lord and have them in church and the sacrifice and the battles sometimes that that takes. Don't let the devil get you off the wall. Hey, don't let the devil stop the progress that God is trying to do in your life. We see here in Nehemiah 4 the tactics that Satan used. He started out with ridicule. The feeble Jews, they can't build the wall. Even if it's built, a fox is going to run up the wall and tear it all down devil is using that way back even at the crucifixion mocking christ and that may be a tactic that you're facing tonight hey you might as well give up you're never going to be the dad that you're supposed to be hey you're never going to be able to serve god your past the things that you've done god's never going to be able to use you the ridicule the mocking that satan uses then he also used force you may be here tonight and you say pastor andrew to be honest i feel like everything is caving in around me it's, it, I'm going through a season where from all sides, both of those instances, Nehemiah didn't quit. He took it to God. He prayed and he kept building the wall. Then discouragement. Well, that's a real thing. Have you ever noticed though, the, those, the two that I mentioned, the ridicule, the force, those are from the outside. Discouragement is from the inside. But if you allow it, discouragement can have the same effect of getting you off the wall just as the attacks of the devil from the outside. And here's the thing. We can't control the attacks from the outside, 
And I know it's a lot easier said than done, but we can control our tenacity and decide to just keep going. Then we see fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of what's going to happen. If I take that step of faith, if I keep going, how's it all going to turn out? We see later, we were in Nehemiah chapter 7 this morning. Of course, if you've read the book of Nehemiah, you know how it all ends. The wall gets built. Nehemiah stays faithful. Nehemiah 7, he sends out a letter to 40,000 Jews to come back to the city, uh, to come back and to be there and to begin rebuilding God used Nehemiah's faithfulness to just stay on the wall to bring the city of Jerusalem back to life. Here's the thing. I don't know what wall that you're on. I don't know what attack that you're going through that Nehemiah did. But I do know God wants you to stay on the wall, keep building. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Just stay faithful to God. Let's have heads bowed and eyes closed tonight. Every head bowed and every eye closed. And end in a couple minutes early. I know we've got the uh, reception afterwards and hope you'll plan to stay for that. A simple truth from Nehemiah chapter 4 is we see the devil really laid out his plan of attack. And it's really one that he's still using today. The ridicule, the force, the discouragement, the fear. I wonder how many of you would be honest with yourself and with the Lord tonight, and every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. How many say, Pastor Andrew, would you pray for me? Because to be honest, uh, that wall, that, that I'm, I'm on the wall right now, but the devil's fighting pretty good. One of those four areas, or maybe it's another tactic that he is using. Would you just pray for me that I could stay on that wall and that I won't quit? If that's you, would you slip your hand up? I know I'm my hand's up. I need that help. I need to stay on that wall. You can put your hands down. Your family's counting on you. Hey, your senior adult in here, your grandkids are watching you. They need you to stay on the wall. They need you to finish building what God has called you to build. Let's all stand and piano's gonna play. Brother Jason's gonna sing or piano's playing. If you need to do business with God, piano's playing. Why don't you step out, step out. The devil's tactics, ridicule, force, discouragement, fear. Piano's playing. If you need to do business with God, you come, you come. Father, we come before you tonight and we do thank you for the reminder that we've heard from the book of Nehemiah, from his example, the truth that you have given to us to stay on the wall. Lord, we do know and we acknowledge that uh, in this day that uh, we do face the attacks of Satan. We do face discouragement from the inside. We face opposition from this world. And Lord, we know that in those moments and, and seasons of testing and trial, we know that It's because you allow it, and we know that it's because you want to make us stronger, or we know that it's because you want to uh, 
uh, produce in us the image of your Son. And so, uh, God, I pray that you'd please give us the strength, uh, your strength, a strength that is not ours, a strength that's not found in ourselves, uh, but your strength, Father, to be able to stay on that wall, to trust you, uh, to look to you, uh, Lord, Lord, as we heard this morning, to fear not uh, to the future. And God, I pray that you'd please just continue to use us in this place as we serve you for your honor and for your glory. We ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. Great, great encouragement for the Andrew tonight. Make sure you go by and thank him for that. That was a blessing to me, and I trust it was to you as well. And so we're going to watch our announcement video tonight, and then as soon as we're done with that, I'll come back up, give us some instructions for the reception, and uh, we invite you to stay to be a part of that, and to congratulate Christopher and Gabby on their wedding, and then uh, just take some time to fellowship with them and with each other. And so let's watch our announcements, and then I'll come right back up. Thank you for spending Sunday with us at Lighthouse Baptist Church. Here's two very quick announcements before we're dismissed. Plan to stick around tonight after the service for a wedding reception for Christopher and Gabby Dupuis. Stop by the fellowship hall to introduce yourself, enjoy some refreshments, and even drop off a gift if you'd like. Next weekend is Mother's Day, and we're looking forward to celebrating moms together as a church family. We'll have a photo booth set up, and we'll also have delicious treats from Crumble Cookies for all of our ladies in attendance. We're also especially excited about Pastor's Sermon as we learn some practical lessons from the relationship of Ruth and Naomi. Don't miss Mother's Day at Lighthouse next Sunday morning. Thank you everyone for being with us today. Be sure to stay connected throughout the week by following us on social media and joining our email list on our website. If Lighthouse is your church home and you'd like to financially participate in our ministry, you may utilize the giving boxes in the back of the room or visit lbctheodore.com give for digital or reoccurring options. Once again, Thank you for joining us today, and we'll look forward to seeing you in our next service. Well, let's all stand, and then uh, we'll be dismissed to the fellowship hall. In fact, Christopher and Gabby, if you want to make your way there so that you can beat the crowd, and uh, then we've got some light refreshments, and uh, as you go out there, make sure you shake their hand and congratulate them, and uh, make them feel uh, welcome and home at, at, uh, as a part of our church, and then uh, be in prayer for Pastor. He'll be back, uh, traveling back tomorrow, and to be back in the office this week, and also make sure that you uh, go by and greet the gardeners before they head out, and there's such a blessing, and we thank you for uh, allowing you, the Lord, to use you as a part of uh, the Eastern Shore Campus, and so we will be praying for them as they leave to uh, go to Missouri and be a part of that church plan up there, and so let's pray, and then uh, we'll be dismissed out to uh, the reception tonight. Father, thank you so much for, again, the opportunity to be here in your house. Lord, we thank you that you are faithful, that you are ever-changing, and that, Father, you have all power and all strength. And Lord, we just want to continue to look to you, to trust you, and uh, to rely upon you for all that we need. We ask that you please uh, bless this time of fellowship, that it would honor and glorify you. And uh, Father, we just want to continue to serve you for your honor, for your glory. We ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you. You are dismissed.
Choice I have made. I am determined.
friends and the troops to guide their paths. But whatever they decide, they will surely realize that God's word will stand. Oh, I take in my stand with the book in my hand. That's heard the test of time. It's whether the storm on the scoffers roar, threatenings of every kind. The eternal survival of that old black Bible, it's true. Will never end. So whatever may come, when it's all said and done, God's word.
time to make our claim. We must go back.